If you've been under anesthesia, this is probably what knocked you out. This is propofol, one of the most commonly used anesthetics in the world. But it may never have made it to market without the persistence of this veterinary scientist. My name is John Glenn officially, but I tend to be known as, as Ian all the time because my father was John as well. And I think all the colleagues I've worked with know me as Ian, although I am officially John. Where did you grow up? I grew up on the island of Arran, on the, a small farm on the island of Arran. It's in the Firth of Clyde, and it just looks across to the Mull of Kintyre, which some people might have heard of. The farm was too small for two careers, so I decided to leave the farm and go and study veterinary medicine. Glenn specialized in veterinary anesthesia, which led him to a job at ICI Pharmaceuticals, later renamed to AstraZeneca. My responsibility was to look for new anesthetic drugs. Because of his knowledge of animal anesthetics, Glenn's job was to search for new anesthetics for people. The hunt began with a chemist making a list of what to test from the company's collections. Have we got any old compounds that were not tested as anesthetics? that we might test now. 5,000 compounds were tested, one stood out. The needle in the haystack was propofol. Propofol was exceptional because it didn't accumulate in the body and recovery was quick in mice. One of the tests was to look at the recovery of coordination. We had a rod raised above the, the lab bench and they had to either balance on the rod for 20 seconds or walk to the end of the rod before that. With the leading anesthetic, the mice passed the test about an hour after they woke. The propofol mice did it in three minutes. The clear-headed recovery of propofol, that was something that really did stand out and has been demonstrated in, in patients who, who, who waken up remarkably clear-headed. But there were times when uh, the drug very nearly uh, failed. The molecule had promise, but there were problems. Propofol has to be mixed with something in order to inject it. The first mixture had side effects. Then there was uncertainty about the dose. The development team had a vote as to whether or not we continue. And by five votes to four, we agreed to continue. It was as near as that, you know, that it, it might have been halted because of potential problems that really could could be overcome. Do you remember being nervous? I can remember exactly where I was sitting at the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in a uh, 19B15 meeting room at the right-hand side of the table and the chairman was there, yeah. Oh, I mean, that, that'll stick with me, yeah. Glenn looked for ways around every problem. He developed new technology to make it easier for physicians to administer and dose. It took 13 years to get it to market. I was sometimes said not to be a, a team player because I would, you know, have my own view on things. And I feel if, if you've got uh, six people paddling a canoe and you know there's a rock ahead, you don't stop shouting because the other guys say it's fine. Did you have the confidence to keep shouting? That's a bit me, I think. <laughs> ask my wife. <laughs> he told you to ask me that. He can be pretty stubborn. Um, if it's something that he believes in, he can be pretty stubborn. I mean, he is like a dog with a bone. If, you know, if he sets his mind to something, that's it. He's a perfectionist. I think it's just a, a drug hunter's hunger, you know, that, that, that uh, keeps you going. And I think if you if you see an outcome that is achievable, find ways round and over the barriers. <laughs>